Hello friends, I'm Suki the Brown Eyed Stitcher. Today is somewhere in the middle of the week. <laughs> and this is Floss Tube 32. I have several things to show you, but I don't know that this is gonna be a like hour long video simply because I'm super, super tired today. And that could mean I either don't talk very much or I talk overly much. We'll see. Yesterday was the coolest day that I also had available recently and so I finally mowed my lawn. It's been weeks and desperately needed but I overheated because it doesn't take much for me to overheat hence why it's been so long since my lawn was mowed in the first place. Anyway, I finally mowed. When I came in, my face was beet red, not from sunburn at all, completely overheating. So I ended up taking like a two hour nap in the afternoon and then I couldn't sleep at night. So I had like three and a half hours of sleep. Let's just dive right in to all the projects. We're starting with my finish. This is, and so many of you have already seen this, from 24 Hours of Cross Stitch. This is Snowshoe Hair from the Sewing Shop which is, uh, the owner is Kaylee Tent Stitch, who has a floss tube and an Instagram. The artist is Miriam Rousseau, and this fabric is an opalescent. You can see the shiny. It is a 28 count, and Kaylee hand dyed it. And then I chose how to put the rabbit on here so I put the lighter colors here the darker colors here and then if you can see there's like darker and it's kind of more greenish over here and then lighter with like that dark streak so I wanted to have this taller and greener behind him he's 31,000 stitches somewhere in there I stitched him over the course of 191 days, I think, but it only took me like 54 stitching sessions within those days. So 54 out of 191 days, I stitched on him and got him done. So uh, for me, this is like a little guy, <laughs> 31,000 stitches only. Uh, I think you'd be surprised at the color palette. Maybe not, because now you can see, like, like these more tan spots. You've got these darker bits. You've got, like, grays and whites. So, oh, he looks so, so good. But let me show you the colors, because it was, like, 49 or 50 colors or something like that. Uh, now this is missing several colors um, because I did, uh, okay, so I was stitching this for Kaylee and so she uh, kitted it also. Uh, so when you get a kit from her, you get cards like these and then the floss is all attached and look how they're, you have the DMC and the number and then you've got the symbol and then you've got that DMC color here. So you can see the colors like that. It's really cool. So this is most of the colors, but I did run out of some colors and had to uh, pull from my stash, but I didn't want to put them back on the card because I needed to be able to tell Kaylee which colors I had run out of so that she could um, adapt what she um, kits up if that makes sense. But 
here's what the colors are. Like some of these, like, do you see that yellow and the orange right here? Those are basically like these lighter sections here and there. But they blended out beautifully. So you got those and those colors. And these, you've got several different shades of like white blue and white purple and white pink <laughs> and white, white gray like the yellow there's greens <laughs> and when you're stitching with just one color like when you're stitching it like this now this might just look like white because of the camera but in person I can see that it's got like a, a pinkish purple color to it okay but when you just have one strand it doesn't look like much difference but of course, then you stitch it out and it all plays beautifully together. So on the sewing shop, it's the sewingshop.ca. It's Canadian. So you need that .ca, not, not .com. There are several other animals, not just the rabbit. So you can go check out the sewing shop for these adorable animals. Now that I have shown him off, I get to pack him up and send him over the border to Canada to go to Kaylee. Next, I'll show you the reindeer. This is by the Cottage Garden, um, Cottage Garden Samplings. This is number 12 in a Year in the Woods series, but it's the first one that I am stitching. And it's on a 32 count Gray Magic. There's the whole thing. By Be Stitch Me. And there is the rabbit now. I will forever have a hanging thread because this is my travel stitch and I very rarely am able to just stop at the end <laughs> of a thread, usually mid-thread when I have to go somewhere. So mostly we've got some additional grass and snow down here. His belly line is all done his tail and now we're in through his rear haunch it is looking really good I love this fabric I do quite enjoy be stitch me fabric and might, might be making another purchase soon for two other patterns, but we'll see. Haven't totally decided on the fabric for a pattern that Kaylin said I should stitch. And if Kaylin says I should stitch something, you know I'm going to jump right on that and acquire the stuff. I worked on this stamped kit. It is a fostered project from Alara. Here is what the art looks like, which will help you be able to see what it is I have stitched on it. certain it was like in this section I stitched but yeah I'm pretty certain it wasn't a whole lot it was just one or two days 
but I got smart and I have a list and every time I worked on a different project, I just wrote it down. A different project meaning just like the first time I wrote it or the first time I stitched on it since my last video, I wrote it down, just the title of it. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So I don't actually know how much I worked on it. I just remember pulling it out and obviously I wrote it down. So it got something. Uh, let's see, last weekend was 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. It was a lot of fun. I live streamed uh, 25 hours out of the 24 that I was aiming for and I finished at snowshoe hair during 24 hours of cross stitch. Now if you remember I wasn't really sure if I was going to or not but I received a lot of encouragement to do so and so I did. It was like 1700 almost 1800 stitches that I had to put in in that one day I don't know but I worked on here I wrote it down hours one through four I worked on treasure hunt bookshelf and I did about a thousand stitches hours five through nine I worked through on snowshoe hair and that was Friday so that was four hours and then five hours on the hair okay four hours on my bookshelf five hours on the hair the next day I started in on this piece Pavon for these times it's by long dog samplers and it looks lovely with the white background and then the colored floss, but I actually switched the two so that my fabric is dark and my floss is light. This was a whip go goal from April I wanted to get done. And I did. I wanted this motif finished. It took about 240 stitches. 281 stitches to finish up this motif and bring the border over. I hand dyed this fabric. It is a 36 count even weave. The thread is Silks For You. P R, why am I trying to remember it? Because it's right in front of me. It's not written down, that's why. PR150. It's a very subtly variegated gray thread, but it, it it's very, very subtle. But there are some darker bits and some lighter bits. And it's lovely. I'm so happy to see that done. The like I said, this is from April. And so this piece is not on my Whipco board anymore. However, I do have five, five, three blank spaces. And I think I'm going to put this on at least one of those blank spaces. I think. It's at 8.36% now. If I put this on each of the three blank spots I have, I could, so I have these two finished. I could put each of these for one of those whip go spots. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have that whole top row done by the end of the year. That might be what I do. Because I like that idea, and I'd love to see this come out again. So that took me two hours to do. And then I went back and worked on the rabbit for the rest of the day. Um, hour 
verse 12 to 19 was snowshoe hair. And I finished it late on Saturday. Well, it was late because it was, I ended up stitching longer than I intended to stitch for like an hour and a half that day. Just because I was so close to finishing the hair and I didn't want to stitch on it the next day. So I just kept going for the next like hour and a half, finished up the rabbit and called Saturday done. So then on Sunday, that only left me needing five hours um, and I ended up stitching for six. I started off with Cirque du Caro. This is Ink Circles. And this was also a whip go goal from April. So I finished April, guys. Now I just have May, June, July, and it's almost August. So, but April is done. This is Gorgeous Floss. This is Silks for You PR090 on 32 count Belfast linen. Stormy Night. Here's the whole thing. Doesn't the thread stitch up gorgeously? It's so beautiful. I worked specifically here. So this upper bit was done, just the um, line there. And so I filled in all the rest of it, including the lower line. That was so fun. I was asked to talk about uh, how to stitch with variegated threads on my live stream. So I shared my thoughts about it and talked about some different ways that you can stitch with variegated floss. But it, you don't have to be intimidated by it if that's something that's stopping you. Obviously, you don't have to stitch with variegated at all, but that's at 11.29% now. I put in 446 stitches. That motif, that one motif was 446 stitches. Crazy. And then... This was chosen for me to stitch on. <laughs> Frodo and Galadriel, artwork by Matt Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Design, and I spent two hours stitching on this piece. So, <laughs> my stitchy friend, Dominique, she has been encouraging me to stitch on the rabbit for a very long time. Um, for a very long time. Like the last two weeks, especially, she was just very encouraging uh, and suggestive of finishing the rabbit during 24 hours of cross stitch. And, and then during the weekend, she tells me that it's because she would really like to, me to see progress on my Lord of the Rings wall but she knows in order for me to really be able to give it focus, my mind demands less projects. So she's helping me by encouraging me with less projects. So I finished Snowshoe Hair and I came here and I, you can see a lot of what I did here. It was 527 stitches. I'm working in part threads. Okay, that's all I'm doing. There is a whole lot of them, but that's what I'm doing is I'm just working them in uh, wherever it makes sense to work them in. This is 25 count Lugana, two over one tent stitch. And it is my oldest project. It is, was started in 2016. 
2017. Uh, yeah, 2016. In November, this will be seven years old. <laughs> so it's six and a half. And it, I got it to 6.25%. Yeah. I was really happy to get this out and be able to stitch on it. So it does look so, so lovely with the, all these yellows, the Malorn trees and La Florian. So yes, 6.25%. Now besides my bookshelf, there's one more to show you. This I'm actually surprised at myself. I didn't think I would be pulling it out yet, but then when I wasn't sleeping last night, I decided to get up and just stitch on something. And I ended up pulling out Woodland Enchantress. This was, for a large portion of the year so far, has been my, like, stitch daily piece to stitch 30 minutes-ish a day on it. And then when I started focusing on getting the rabbit done, this fell by the wayside, and so I haven't stitched on it for many days. But here it is, Woodland Enchantress. The artist is Ruth Sanderson. It is a Dimensions Gold Collection kit. And I'm using all the kit things, kit fabric, kit threads. Which is a 16 count gray Ada. It is my second oldest project. And I worked on all of these little snow bits and filling it in. Even this one, which kind of looks not filled in a little bit. It, it is, I promise you. So I think I have all the snowy things done. I think. But it was the middle of the night when I was working on this. It was like 2 in the morning. Um, so yeah, that's mostly what I did. Was, was filling in that and like some of the surrounding bits in it. And it does. It looks so good. I am actually quite, quite happy to have this out again and um, be able to make it a regular thing once more. See some progress on it? Like, now that it's July and I missed several days, a few months of working on it, like, I can't actually, I don't remember the last time I worked on it besides before today. Um, but can I still get it done by the end of the year just by working on it a little bit every day? No idea. We'll find out. <laughs> and of course, my bookshelf. I think this is the star of the show. It is eye-catching and stunning. It is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, Super Size, Max Color, Artwork by Amy Stewart, Charted by Heaven and Earth Design. I am stitching the third shelf with a goal date of the third shelf being done. Um, hold on, sorry, I put Woodland Enchantress down the wrong way, so then I was confused. Which is not hard to do, let's be real about that. What was I saying? I don't know. Oh, the third shelf. The goal for the third shelf is like first weekend of November-ish, more or less. Um, so we're just going to say October 31st. October 31st to finish the third shelf, and then October 31st, 2024, to finish the fourth shelf. In order to do this, I need to stitch about 600 stitches a day and not take off any, like, too many more unnecessary days. Otherwise, my daily stitch count goes up. Anyway, uh, where's my... This is 28 count 
uh, two strands over one thread tent stitch. I have put in 741 stitches since you last saw it. And it is at 68.65%. So I stitched in this red color. It is 814. And then, and there's there's a, a lot of it. You can you can see it like all over. And then I started. I'm switching now to stitch some of those smaller colors because there's only maybe two colors left with like a significant number of stitches remaining in the whole piece. But I want to get those smaller stitches in, and then finish out with those big ones. So I switched over to a dark blue, which filled in some down here and then up here and across here. There's a little bit more, not too much. Most colors, this is a max color after all, most of the remaining 200 plus colors have less than 4,000 stitches left in the entire piece. So I'll go through a lot of colors, but it won't look like a ton of. It won't be quite as noticeable as these. But I think what I'll do is I'll end up going to the diagonal that I had here and picking the first color like I normally do, but this time cross country it out. Extreme cross country it out. However, if I hit one of those two colors that are like around nine or 10,000 stitches left, I will not do those. I'll skip over it, but I will just, otherwise I'll cross country it out and that will start seeing this getting filled in and these like speckled in, I guess. <laughs> Always good to see this piece. So something that I brought up on 24 Hours of Cross Stitch was that I wanted a way to be able to see my projects, like my whips. not just pictures on my phone, but I wanted to be able to see where I was at all times. I also didn't want to see, like I have that board, which is in disarray right now because it's gotten moved several times, so I'm not gonna show it, but I had a board and I printed out my projects and they were stuck on it. Okay. Uh, if you're new around here, you might not have seen it unless you've gone back and seen old videos. Uh, but just envision. It doesn't matter. You don't even have to envision it. But they were pictures of the finished project or the artwork, which was great. But I was learning, I've learned, that what excites me is to actually see where I'm at in my projects. So I was kicking around different ideas during 24 hours and uh, Kate had a great idea to do a digital picture frame. And then Alicia from Adventures in Stitching, uh, she went and did some like searching and, and giving me like some price ranges and things. And man, digital picture frames, not inexpensive. Like a 20 inch one was gonna be something like $300. But a lot of people use their TVs. Well, my TV's downstairs, but I wanted this to be displayed in my stitchy space here. So, I went and got a super cheap TV. It is a 24 inch, uh, like 720p resolution, okay? It's not like 
oh, the resolution's so great or anything, but I don't, like, it's, it's exactly what I wanted, okay? I didn't need something real fancy. I just wanted to be able to have my pictures of my projects. So I got it all set up. It's like right over here. It's on my desk. So I'm like, it's hard to show you because it has a, a glare on it <laughs> because of the windows. But so I have a desk and then I've got like this tower part that's triangular on the top and it sits on the angled side of the triangle and it fits perfectly and I got it all set up so that I can turn on my pictures and it just shuffles through and I just got it last night and I'm already completely in love with it. It's got me so excited. I look at it and I go, oh, I'm further along. Like I can tell where my progress is or there's some that I'm like, oh, that progress is so sad. It, there's hardly anything on it and it makes me want to pull them out. So I have some really bad pictures that I probably won't even insert here, but that's what I've got and I love it. I highly recommend doing it. I, it was $65, okay? So I got this 24 inch TV for $65 and that's it. Way cheaper than a digital picture frame. So if you too want something like that, I'm also considering putting in pictures of my finished pieces because even if I do manage to get them fully finished, they're not going to be in this space necessarily. So I still wouldn't see them like while I'm stitching. Not to say I would never put anything up in here, just that it's not likely to be the only place, you know? So I can put like finishes up there too intermixed with my lips. I haven't totally decided on that one, but maybe so. <laughs> the other thought I had was that I could also include pictures of projects that I really want to stitch. And then as they are all intermingling in this slideshow, I might see that, you know, I don't really like that one anymore. Or, um, like, these ones are really, really similar. Do I really want to take time away from these projects in order to stitch something that's really similar? Things like that. Haven't decided on that one, but it is a thought that crossed my mind, so I thought I would share it for anybody who is maybe looking for something like that, or if by seeing where their whips are might be really motivating to you, or just make you happy. Just try it. I have less than 30 projects, so it's not like I have like this huge, huge amount and I'm just going to like forget all of them, but still seeing them is exciting. Actually, finishing the snowshoe hair means I've got 28 projects now, three of which are fostered projects, but 28. It's exciting. I will be starting a project in August that is a... Christmas present, so that one I need to start and work on, but I feel like everything else I can wait to start on while I still, like, work on finishing projects. So, I don't really know what I'm going to be working on. Obviously, my bookshelf and Woodland Enchantress, and then my, like, active projects that I'd like to pull from regularly. Um, well, there's supposed to be six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. But I'm having trouble deciding on the sixth one. So, for priority, I've got the Sorceress. This is fostered from Alara. I am doing the back stitching for her. It's a dimensions kit. But I am doing a lot of the back stitching and things like that. I was working here last time I pulled it out. 
It's been a while since I've done it. This needs to be done by November, which is 108 days away to stitching in the springs. I've heard from several of you that you will also be there and I'm very, very excited to be able to meet more of you and see your projects in person. My bookshelf will, of course, be there with its third shelf finished and it will be unrolled in all its glory. And yeah, anyway, uh, I want to give this back to Alara with all the stitching done in November. So that's why this is in the priority spot. Uh, so ideally that means that I'm going to be working on this every other week. So project one. Project two is Lord of the Rings. That one is Frodo and Galadriel, which you've already seen, so I'm not going to pull it up here. So how I like to do this rotation that has fallen by the wayside ever, let's see, since May started, really. Because after May, that's when I got into finishing the rabbit. So project one, the sorceress, and then project two, Frodo and Galadriel, and then back to my priority piece, the sorceress. And then project three, which is specialty stitches, and that slot is being filled by the summer garden by the drawn thread. My fabric is darker than this, which I don't, it's okay, but it just doesn't pop as much as it does in the picture, that's all. But it is what, it is what they sent me. I ordered the kit from the drawn thread and they sent me this, it's summer khaki. Oh, I forget what count it is, 32 count, 32 count. And that's where it is. I'm working in this section and then I'm working my way to the left side. And then I can work my way to the right side. I haven't done any specialty stitches in it yet, only crosses. But I do know that in this section there are specialty stitches. Just haven't done any of them yet. After that, I would go back to the Sorceress and then um, non-full coverage slot goes to Sabrina. This is a Mirabilia MD106. I am stitching this one with uh, Catherine at Needleberry Stitcher. We have the same exact fabric but she is stitching her version with beads and two over two skin. I am stitching my version without beads and with one over one skin. And then when we're both finished, we're going to meet up and we're gonna be able to show them together and it's gonna be fantastic. I cannot wait. This is 28 count linen in Sprite by Picture This Plus, and I mean, this is how big the fabric is, and here is where she's currently at. All of her skin is finished. So the next time I come in, I mean, will I go to dress? Will I come and do gloves and the chair? I'm not really certain what I decided I was going to do, but we'll see. These are just parked from back stitching. I stopped uh, because I need more stitches in and I just set it off to the side. Uh, one goes to this part and the other goes to this part. <laughs> That's why you can see two different threads there. But there she is. Oops. 
She's also on my Whipgo board. So, and so is the Summer Garden. All of my non-full coverage pieces are on my Whipgo board. So, some of them, like Sabrina, will get worked on as part of like my this weekly rotation thing, but also Whipgo. And then we've got the full coverage slot. Queen of the Night. This is artwork by Josephine Wall, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is in the full coverage slot. It is at 29.84%. It's on 25 count. Two over one tent stitch. And it currently looks like that. I'm showing you all of these because Theoretically, I'm going to be following that weekly schedule. However, if I don't, I'm still going to try to just work on these active whips or my whip go whips and not any of the others. So that's why I'm just showing you all of them because it's been a while and hmm, why not? So whip go. Oh, wait, wait. The sixth project out of the weekly ones. It is, the category is close to a finish. I no longer know which project is my closest to a finish. So, hmm. Let me look real quick. I have two projects that I think could um, either I'd be fine putting in for that. One is this kit. Um, it's Peaceful Garden Path. And it, it looks like this now. So like I have the rest of the corners and all of like the middle <laughs> like there's still a lot of stitching but I have this or and this one I can't I can't show you a finish because I don't have a printout of it but this is house plants and I only have part one done this is on 40 count it's so tiny um, but I could also put this as close to a finish so let me know what you think out of these two. Should I put Peaceful Garden Path or House Plants as my close to a finish? This is one over one tent stitch on 40 count. It is tiny and I adore it. I very much love the tiny stitch so much. All right. As far as called whip go pieces that I haven't finished yet, I have uh, house plants is one of them. House plants is actually called twice in June and August. So I will get at least two plants done for that. I have Victorian Christmas bell pole. This was called in May. Just looks like that now. I was gonna start in on the little people who are ice skating. My Shadow Lane Autumn Water Garden Mandala. This was called in both July and August, so no idea what I will do for it, but 
currently looks like this. These are little fishies and they're adorable. This fabric is much, it is larger than it needs to be. But I didn't cut it down to size. I probably won't cut it down until the end. Northern Expressions Needlework. This is by Twisted Band Sampler. It's on a 32 count black linen. That's where it's at. I think this has only been called... Oh, it already had one. So um, I would do the next specialty stitch band. Would be what I did for Ripco on this one. So it's still a lot of projects that I can choose from. Whether or not I stick to any kind of like rotation. Um, there's a fair amount of like sweewee happening. Um, and wanting, like, wanting to get things finished. That's why I was working so much on snowshoe hair. But there's also been a lot of, of, like, w which ones do I want to work on? Without pulling from all my projects, these are the ones that I want to focus on. And, of course, right, the reindeer is my travel piece. Um, and Woodland Enchantress is the Daily 30 bookshelf, my Daily 600, <laughs> and the stamped kit as needed for brain dead situations that I still want to stitch. I am really proud though, I have stitched every single day for the last year and a half, and I will definitely keep that going. It is so motivating, even if it's just a few stitches on a really, really busy day. Um, it feels so good to me to know that I can, can do something like that for myself. So I just keep it up. Okay. Uh, the last thing I was going to share is, hold on, let me make sure that was the last thing. Okay, yes. So I have a couple videos that I have promised people <laughs> that I will be working on. One is the equipment and setup I use for live streaming. So I will make a video showing what I use and walking you through the software that I use for it. Not to say that this is how you need to do it, but I do get a lot of questions from people who are wanting to get into it. So I will tell you how I, like the evolution to where I am now. I have also received a lot of questions on how to start a floss tube video or channel and maybe some like things that you need to think of or equipment or stuff like that. So I should make a video for that as well. And if you have any other requests for types of videos you would like to see, I do get requests for um, Stitch With Me's. I think these are people who don't see my live videos or don't want that, that kind of Stitch With Me, and I'm totally fine with that. I can do some uh, pre-recorded Stitch With Me's. However, I do think they're gonna be a different style. I had this idea that came to me while I was thinking about what is it that I love putting out in the world? Uh, what are the things that I value most at my core and am I showing that to other people? Am I being authentically me? And 
like, how can I just do more of that? How can I be more authentically me? Not, like, not more authentically me, but just, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, just when I have ideas now, I just like to make sure that they're in line with, with who I am at my core. So I had um, a really nice idea for a stitch with me that's very different from my live stream stitch with me. So um, it will take me a while to get to that because I do have some other videos I need to get to first. And I've got uh, lots of travel between, I have at least three travel trips between now and the end of August. But then summer will be over and my traveling will decrease but still definitely be present <laughs> anyway if you have any other requests for videos uh, those are the ones that are on my radar but please uh, feel free send me a message an email that information is all in the description box you can just leave a comment um, however you feel like getting a hold of me now, lastly, I just wanted, I thought this would be fun. I made a list of every floss tuber I have watched since my last video. I, I will um, put them in the description box below. I will not pop them up on screen here because there are a lot of them. Um, and anyway, if I did put them up on the screen, I'd want them to pop up like random, like bloop, 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 and I don't actually want to do all of that editing unless I figure out how to do it really easy. Maybe I'll have Kaylin figure it out and then I will just do it. I don't know. Anyway, here are the floss tubers I have watched since I last filmed. Carla at Stitch Me Sane, James the PH Stitcher, Jen the Caffeinated Crafter, Megan the Seattle Stitcher, Holly at My Daily Hades, Jen at Backcountry Stitcher, Elizabeth at Frizzy Lizzy Stitches, Ashley at Boogie Stitcher, Alicia at Adventures of Stitching, um, Hallie with Stitch and Big Things with Hallie, Megan at Stitching Moon, Stephanie at The On Point Stitcher, Kim Hollenbach, Anita at The Violet Stitcher, Angie Slowly Crafts, Stitch Man Darcy, and Stitched Lit by Claire. Lots of people. Um, like I said, I will put them all in the description box below, as well as links to all the projects that I have shown today. And I guess any other relevant links, like where you can find me on Instagram, the Brown Eyed Stitcher. I do post pictures every day of what I'm sitting on. Uh, the link to my Discord, which is limited time uh, to use that link. So if you do come across this and that link's expired, but you would like to join, um, just shoot me a message somehow and I can get you a fresh link so you can join us on um, Discord at, in the Suki Village. I think that's it. We are under one hour, so awesome. I love you all and I am so grateful to have you in my life and hope that I have been some benefit in your life just as company mostly. I just think of us as like sitting here and, and chatting and I don't know, just being friends. That's all. <laughs> and. So I hope that you feel my love for you, and I will talk to you later. Bye.